Okay, mom, that's so old. Mom, let me see that. No, she just took it's it. It's old. Three hours ago. <laughs> mom, let me see it. Three hours ago. Let me see it. Okay. Today we're going to start the last yeah. second chapter. That is chapter 25. He wears the winter jacket now. He puts on the jacket. Short-term business decision. What's our stocks at? Well, in order to make short-term decisions, we need to look at the relevant information regarding the cost in the business. So, first of all, we'll get to know what is relevant information for making short-term business decisions. Well, after that, after being able to identify the relevant information, you learn to how to make business decisions like making regular and special pricing decisions. After that, you need to use short-term uh, relevant, relevant information to make other decisions like dropping a product, product mix or sales mix, and make outsourcing and processing further decisions. Well, so as I said, it is crucially important to identify relevant information in making short-term business decisions. So let's take a look. This slide illustrates how managers make business decisions among different alternative courses of action. First of all, uh, they define business goals and then they identify alternative courses of action. They have alternative one and alternative two. Well, in the third phase, in the third stage, it is very important it is to gather and analyze relevant information in order to compare those alternatives. Well, after this comparison, they make decisions. They say, well, this alternative is good and that alternative is worse. So we adopt the better one. Again, as I said, the managers make short-term business, business decisions. They need to focus on the information that is relevant to the decision. So by saying relevant, By seeing relevant decision, let's see the two characteristics of relevant decision. First of all, relevant information is expected future data that differs among alternatives. The first characteristic of relevant information is it is future information. And the second one, the second characteristic is that that information differs among 
alternatives. So, similarly, relevant cost here means the costs that are relevant to particular decision. So, for example, okay, uh, I need to mention that in this chapter, we will, we will continue using the fictitious company Smart Touch Learning to illustrate different points appear in this chapter. For example, the company, this company, is considering purchase a new delivery trunk. And the company needs to choose between two different models. So these two different models of the delivery trunk offer different price as well as different sales tax. Oh, in addition, uh, the insurance premium cost would be different. So the cost, the sales tax, and the insurance premium differ between these two models. So this information would be considered relevant because they are not only differ between each other, but also in the future cost at the company. So these costs can be relevant. Irrelevant information or irrelevant costs are the costs that do not affect the decision because they are not in the future or do not differ among alternatives. For example, in this case that I just mentioned, if the two trunk models have similar fuel efficiency and maintenance rating, we do not expect the trunk operating cost to differ between these two alternatives because these future costs do not differ. They do not affect the company's decision. So in this case, these features are considered to be irrelevant. And one more thing that you should you should know is sunk cost. Sunk cost is also considered irrelevant. Sunk costs are defined as the cost that were incurred in the past. Some costs are defined as any cost that were incurred in the past. And cannot be changed regardless of which future action is taken. Some costs are always irrelevant. But it doesn't mean we cannot learn from the past decision. For example, in this case, the managers should always consider the results of past decisions when making future decisions. But because some costs are already spent, the cost is not relevant to future decision making. For example, in this case, the company wants to trade in its current trunk when the company buys a new trunk. 
the amount of the company pays for the current chunk is sunk cost. Other examples of chunk uh, sunk cost include uh, the depreciations uh, and the original purchase price of an asset, which was just mentioned. Non financial, non financial factors also play a role in manager's decisions and can be relevant. For example, uh, in a, for example, uh, closing manufacturing plants and laying off employees can seriously hurt the employee's moral the decision to buy or subcontract a product or service rather than product the model in house can reduce control over delivery time or product quality. Offering discounted price to select customer can upset regular customers and tempt them to take their business elsewhere. So managers must always consider the potential qualitative or quantitative effects of these decisions. Well, a common approach to make short-term business decision is called differential analysis. Well, in this approach, the emphasis is on the difference, the difference of Operating income between the alternative approaches. Well, differential analysis is also sometimes called incremental analysis. Well, instead of, instead of looking at the company's entire income statement under each decision alternative. We just look at how operating income would differ under each alternative. So in this approach, we look at the difference of operating income. Well, uh, do you remember how to calculate Income. Yes, it was discussed in the previous chapter. Flexible uh, variable variable cost. So using this approach. We leave out the irrelevant information, the revenues and costs that will not differ between alternatives. So in this chapter, we consider several kinds of short-term business decisions. The first kind is to make regular and special pricing decision. But as you study 
keep in mind there's two K's in analyzing short term business decision. First, you focus only on relevant information that, that is relevant revenue, relevant costs, and relevant profits. In order to make short term business decision, irrelevant information only clouds the picture and creates information overload. Well, the second thing you need to remember is to use a contribution margin approach that separates variable cost from fixed cost. Because fixed cost and the variable cost behave differently, they must be analyzed separately. Traditional income statements, which blend fixed and variable cost together, mislead the manager. While contribution margin income statement, which isolates the cost by the behavior of cost, they separate the cost into variable and fixed. Well, contribution margin income statement can help the managers gather the cost behavior information manufacturing costs per unit are mixed cost too. If you use manufacturing cost per unit in your analysis, be sure to first separate the unit cost into fixed and variable because it is mixed. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the business decision regarding the price, the selling price. Well, in the past, managers didn't consider pricing to be a short-term decision. But nowadays, product life cycle are getting shorter in many industries. So companies often sell the products for only a few months before replacing them with the updated model. For example, in the clothing and IT industry. These industries have always had very short life cycle. Uh, well, even the, the auto and housing style change frequently. So nowadays, pricing has become a short-term decision than it was in the past years. So in order to make decisions regarding the price of the product, the managers here must consider three factors. First, what is the company's Target profit. Second, 
how much will customers are willing to pay? And lastly, is the is the company a price taker or a price setter for this product or service? Well. The answers to these questions are complex and ever changing. Stockholders expect the company to achieve a certain profit. Economic conditions or some historical company earnings or some other uh, factors will all affect the level of profit that stockholders expect. Stockholders uh, usually tie their profit expectations to the amount of assets invested in the company. For example, the stockholders may expect a 10% annual return on a company's stock price tends to decline if it doesn't meet the target profit. So managers must keep costs low while generating enough revenue to meet the profit. The second question, how much the customers are willing to pay? Managers can set prices above what customers are willing to pay. But in this case, the sales volume will decline. The customers will pay depends on the supply and demand, which is influenced by the competition, the product uniqueness, the effectiveness or marketing departments or some other general economic condition. Well, let's take a look at the third question. Is the company a price taker or price setter? Well, what are they? You can imagine two extremes in a horizontal line. Price taker is one extreme, and price setter is another extreme end. Well, but I would say most companies fall somewhere along this line. Okay, but in this chapter, we will focus only on these to extreme cases. Companies are price taker when they have little or no control over the prices of their products or services and take the price set by the market. This occurs when their products and services are not unique or when the competition is extremely intense. Well, ex some examples include the food products, uh, natural resource, or genetic consumer products. And if price setter 
is when the company has more control over the price. In other words, they can set the price to some extent. Companies are price setters when their products are unique, which results in less competition. Unique products, such as mm, original art, uh, jewelry, specially manufactured machineries, or the, some special perfume scents, or latest technology gadgets. These are some examples the companies who are price setters. Again, price setter companies' products are unique so that they can set the price to customers. Well, obviously, the managers would rather be the price setters than the price takers. So in order to have more control over the price, the companies try to differentiate their product. They want to make the product unique in terms of features, service, or quality, or at least they need to make the buyers think their product is unique or somewhere better than the products of their competitors. The companies achieve this differentiation partly through adver advertising department. So that's why you can see a lot of advertisements in the market to claim some uniqueness of their products. They claim the uniqueness of their products so that they can set a little bit higher price than the, uh, than the market price, which is the price that the customers are willing to pay. So in this case, they can make more profit, or in other words, somewhat they can be the price setter rather than the price taker. Okay, having known the difference between these two types of companies, price setter and the price taker, we have two different pricing strategy for them. Okay, first of all, target pricing, which is the pricing strategy used for price taker companies. When the company is a price taker, it emphasizes a target pricing approach to managing cost and profit. Well, as you can see, a target, target pricing starts with the market price of the product. Well, market price is the price that the customers are willing 
to pay. Or in other words, the market price is the price that is accepted by the company from the market. Okay, it starts with the market price of the product and then subtract the company's desired profit. And then determine the maximum allowed target product cost. Okay. The target full product cost includes all the costs in the life cycle of the products, including development development, producing, and delivery of the product or service. So target pricing is sometimes called target costing because the desired target price is delivered from the target price. So the formula is displayed in the in this slide. Well, let's uh, take take a look at of the example of Smartest Learning Company. Okay, for example, the company is the price price taker in the market. And this is the income statement of the companies in the in the end of year two thousand and nineteen. Well, because of because of the competition in the market, the company will emphasize a tar target pricing approach. Well, let's assume. Let's assume the company's stockholder expect a 10% annual return on the company's asset. And let's assume the total value of assets is $2,500,000. So 10% of the total asset is 250 that is the amount of the desired assets of the stockholder of the company. Well, For example, let's go back to the income the income statement. Let's assume the selling price of the com of the tablet is five hundred dollars, and the company also let's assume the company is able to sell all products produced. Within this year, the company produces 
2,400 tablets. Thousand four hundred tablets times the selling price, which is five hundred dollars, we get the total revenue one million two hundred thousand. So as I said, the stockholders of the company expected a ROI to be 10%. So we have the following calculation. Revenue at market price, that is 2000 400 tablets at 500 each, less the desired profit, which is 250,000, derived right from here. So we get the target full product cost, which is 900, Fifty thousand but let's take a look at its income statement. The actual cost of these products or the actual cost of two thousand four hundred products is place in this income statement to be a variable part plus the fixed part. Okay, if you can do a calculation here, you get Nine hundred sixty four thousand dollars. So, in other words, the actual cost of these products, which is nine hundred sixty four thousand, is higher than the management expectation, which is 950000 So the higher cost means less profit. Actually, the company realizes only Nine point forty four percent ROI. So here is analysis of what can be done of the company. The first approach is to accept this lower operating income, and the result is in the lower ROI, which is 9.44%, rather than 10% targeted ROI, which is required by the stockholders. Well, the second approach is definitely to reduce the fixed cost. And similarly, the third approach is to reduce the variable cost by 14,000 or even more. By reducing 14,000, 9.44% uh, can be 
raised to 10% if you reduce the cost more than 14,000. The ROI will definitely be higher than 10%. Well, some other approaches. The fourth one, attempt to increase the sales, uh, sales volume. If the company has excess manufacturing capacity, taking, making and selling more units would affect the variable cost, right? But it would mean that the current fixed costs are spread over more units. So that means the unit fixed cost will be lowered. If you can remember the things introduced in, uh, in CVP analysis capture. The more you make, the less the average fixed cost is. Average unit, unit fixed cost. So, but the pre assumption here is that you can make more while you can sell more. The fifth option is to change or add to its product mix. Well, uh, regarding product mix, we will introduce this concept later in this chapter. Or the company can try to differentiate its tablet computers from its competitors gain more control over the sales price. Well, that is actually one of the most prevalent marketing strategy, as I just said in the beginning of the class. Try to make your product different from those products of your competitors, or at least to make the consumers think that your products are somewhat unique or different. Or in other words, this, the goal of this behavior is to set the market price much higher so that the Customers are willing to pay more to buy your products while your sales volume doesn't decrease. Okay, the last option that the management can take is to set a combination of the above strategy. Uh, it is not actually a strategy. It is just a combination of the the six strategies mentioned above. Using together would also increase revenue or decrease the cost by at least fourteen thousand in order to meet your targeted ROI, which is 10%. Okay, this is this is uh, target pricing. Next, let's take a look at uh, uh, cost plus pricing. Cost plus pricing. Well, this Pricing strategy 
should be used for the price setters. When the company is price setter, it emphasizes a cost plus approach to pricing. This pricing approach is essentially the opposite of target pricing approach. This approach, as you can see in this slide, starts with the company's full product cost and adds its desired profit to, to determine the same price of the product. When the product is unique, the company has more control over pricing. But the company still needs to make sure that the cost plus price is not higher than what customers are willing to pay. If your desired profit is much too high, resulting in the cost plus price that is higher than the customer are willing to pay, then your sales volume would decrease, which will result, which will have a negative effects on your final total profit. So let's go back to our example. Let's, ass let, let's assume that a smartest learning company at this time produces a unique model of tablet computer. Uh, it is unique because the company's preloaded e-learning software can be found nowhere else. So in this case, the company has some control over the price it charges for its tablet. Using Using cost plus pricing approach, assuming the current level of sales and a desired profit of 10% of average assets. The final price set for the tablet is 400 and dollars per unit. Well, let's take a look in detail. Well, this is the variable cost per unit. Well, this number can be found in the previous slide, actually, right here, the variable cost per unit, right here. Variable cost plus fixed cost. because the total product cost, total product cost plus the desired profit, which is 10% of average assets, we get $250,000. So 
this is desired profit plus the total product cost. We get the target revenue. The target revenue divided by number of tablets sold to market, which is 2,400. Finally, we get the target, the targeted cost plus price per tablet which is five hundred and six dollars. So to summarize, if a company is a price taker for the product, it emphasizes a target pricing approach. While if a company is a price setter, it emphasizes a cost plus a cost plus pricing approach. Okay, next special pricing. Special pricing, what is that? A special pricing decision occurs when a customer requests a one-time order at a reduced sales price. Well, two characteristics of special pricing. First, one time. And second, at a reduced sales price. So your decision is to decide whether the business should agree to accept this special order. Before making such decision, the management must consider the following question. Managers must consider the available manufacturing capacity. If the company is already using all its existing manufacturing capacity and setting all the units made at regular sales price, it would not be as profitable to fill a special order at a reduced price, uh, sales price. So available excess capacity is the basic necessity for accepting basic uh, special orders. And this is also true for service companies. Second, the managers need to consider whether the special reduced sales price is high enough to cover differential cost of filling the special order. Well, here, differential costs are the costs that are different if the alternative is chosen. The special price must be greater than the variable cost of filling the order or the company will incur a loss on the deal. Uh, in other words, the special order must provide a positive contribution margin. Additionally, the company must consider differential fixed costs. If the company has excess capacity, fixed costs probably 
will not be effective by producing more units. But in some cases, the management may have to incur some other fixed costs to fill the special order, such as uh, additional insurance premium or the purchase of special equipment. If so, we need to consider whether the special order sales price is high enough to generate a positive contribution margin in order to cover at least to cover the fixed cost. Well, finally, the managers need to consider whether the special order will affect the regular price in the long run. Well, regular uh, regular customers find out about the special orders and demand the lower price. Well, sometimes if a customer place, places a special order for one time, it's probably that the customer come back again and again asking for same reduced price. If so, your regular price will be effective in the long run. And also, will the special order price start a price war with the competitors? If a price war is started, by accepting a special pricing. Not only you, but also your competitors. I mean, the whole industry, the whole industry will be harmed by your special order with a much lower price. Okay, so let's consider an example. For example, the smart touch learning company normally sells its tablet computers for $500 each. So let's assume a company has offered the smart touch learning company a special order of 250 tablets at the unit selling price at uh, 275. Well, I will write it here. Its regular selling price is five hundred dollars regular. But at, at this time, the company offered a special order of uh, two hundred five. 250 companies at a very low price at $275. Well, This is the special pricing. Well, before we do the analysis, let's assume some conditions. First, the production will 
use manufacturing capacity that would otherwise be idle. So in other words, it has some extra capacity to make more product. Second, no change in fixed cost. Oh, in other words, the company doesn't have to buy some extra extra equipment in order to make those products. Third, no additional variable manuf non-manufacturing expense because no extra selling or administrative costs are incurred with this special order. Or in other words, remember, the administrative cost Selling and the administrative cost doesn't variable variable selling and the administrative cost doesn't change. And lastly, if this special order is accepted, it has no effect on the long term regular sales price. So let's take a look at of its income statement. First of all, let's take a take a look at of the income statement on the left part, which is prepared in traditional format. Okay, by looking at this part, you can calculate the unit cost right from looking at COGS. That is This number six hundred and ninety eight thousand divided by the amount of units which is 2,400 equals its unit cost, which is 290 dollars 83 cents. Well, if you look at this part, you, are pro you will probably make the incorrect decision because the unit cost, which is $290.83, is higher than the special order price. Well, your cost is higher than the selling price. You will definitely not accept this special order. But remember, in order to make the short-term business decision, you will only need to consider the relevant information. So. If you can look at the income statement in contribution margin format, which is displayed on the right side of this slide. It 
separate the cost to be fixed and variable. Well, do you remember the four assumptions that I just mentioned? The second assumption is there's no change in fixed cost. So fixed cost will not change. It doesn't differ in accepting or not accepting the special order. It doesn't differ. So in this case, fixed cost is irrelevant. We don't consider this. And another assumption is no additional variable non-manufacturing expenses. That means no extra cost, no, uh, no extra selling and administrative variable cost. Regarding variable cost, this part is irrelevant. So the only part that you need to consider is this. This is the only relevant information that you need to consider in making this business decision to reject or to accept. So using this cost, let's do a calculation uh, here. The variable cost, variable manufacturing cost is 588,000 divided by Two thousand four hundred. Okay, we get the unit cost to be only two hundred and forty five dollars. So here at this stage. We compare this number, 245, with the offered actual price. Okay, by comparing these two numbers, we can see that the special order will provide a positive contribution margin of $30 per tablet. Okay, $30 is the difference between 275 and 245, which is the cost. Well, because the special order is for 250 tablets, this company, this company's uh, total contribution margin should increase by seven thousand five hundred, which is uh, two hundred and five two hundred fifty tablets times thirty dollars per tablet which is also the contribution margin. So, we can decide this order to be accepted. We can also use the differential analysis approach. The company compares the additional revenues from the special order with the additional expenses to see if special order will contribute to profit. 
These are the amounts that will be different, different if the order is accepted. So this slide shows that the special sales, the special sales order will increase revenue by 68,750. But we also increase the variable call manufacturing cost by 61,205. Still results results a increase of the total contribution margin, which is seven hundred uh, seven thousand five hundred as previously shown in the previous slide. So to summarize, to make decision of whether to accept a special pricing order, if the expected increase in revenue is more than the expected increase in variable and fixed cost, we accept this special pricing order. If the expected increase in revenue is less than the expected increase in variable and fixed cost, we reject the special pricing order. Well, that is the end of this class. In the next class, we'll look at the other two important business decisions made based on looking at the relevant information. Okay. So before I leave, do you have any other questions? Uh, well, again, you 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 can feel free to open your microphone to talk. Talk to me directly or type in the chat box for any other questions regarding the final exam or regarding the contents of what I just explained in the class. No more? Okay, if you have any further questions, after the class, please, free, uh, please feel free to send me an email. Uh, or otherwise, I will see you on Wednesday. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.